in jesus name we pray heavenly father we thank you because of this wonderful time a secret time a blessed time that you are preserved for us to come in your presence to learn every time therefore lord we pray at this time you open the pages of the scriptures to every one of us in jesus name make clear make plain the instruction in the word that lord as this word comes to us the reading of the word the interpretation of the word the application of the word lord we will see we will know what you want us to see what you want us to know in jesus name and lord we pray the entrance of the word will bring light and life to every one of us lord jesus who said when you're on earth that the word should speak their life and their spirit and we pray that the, the energy of the life of the word will preach abundantly and very definitely in every heart here tonight in jesus name and the spiritual impact and power of the word will do an unforgettable work in every heart thank you lord let this word be very clear to everyone today that we will know we're being in the presence of the lord and he himself has taught us his mind we thank you because we know you have answered in jesus name we pray thank you very much you can sit down we're looking at matthew chapter 5 and we're looking at one verse of scripture matthew chapter 5 we're looking at verse 13 ye are the salt of the earth but ye the salt have lost his savour wherewith shall it be salted it is this fault good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under the foot of men that's the verse we're looking at it's very interesting as you look at the way jesus taught and the way jesus made plain things that were hidden and things that were difficult to understand and he simplified everything and then jesus christ used symbols he used emblems he used illustrations he used metaphors he used figures of speech to tell us who we ought to be and to tell us who we used to be and then to tell us what will move us out of where we used to be to where we ought to be it tells us in this book of matthew alone the gospel according to saint matthew it tells us what we were and he used illustrations and there were things that people could understand what were we he was telling he was talking to the pharisees he said you vipers that means dangerous snakes on another occasion he said don't give that which is good unto dogs another time he said i send you like sheep in the midst of wolves another time he told the people he said he will divide the people between like a shepherd divides the sheep from the goats you see that's what we were we were vipers we were snakes that's what we were we were dogs that's what we were without grace before grace reached us we were wicked at heart violent in our lifestyle and destructive were just unacceptable in the sight of the lord then he said when christ comes to you and you come to christ and there is this interaction oppression between christ and uh, the man or the woman a change takes place and it begins to say ye are the salt of the earth a change has taken place now a change of metaphor a change of figure of speech a change of the symbol a change of the life of the people that came to him because of that change there's a change of description he had the salt of the earth he had the light of the world a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden a change no more in darkness but now you're in the light and then he says you're sheep 
And I go before you as a shepherd And my sheep hear my voice And they follow me And they will not follow a stranger And then he said You are like the dove Be gentle as doves Do you see what the Lord is saying? He's using what the people knew very well and then he's trying to describe and trying to tell the people this is what you were in the past bad wicked and evil but now that you come to christ this is the change that comes to you it says you are now the salt of the earth not the pepper not the onion but you are the salt the salt of the earth what a change has taken place when you become born again when you become when you come to know the lord and this mighty change that comes your life everybody can tell everybody can see everybody can recognize this is salt look at it the look of it the appearance of it i know this is salt the taste of it I can tell the way it tastes this is salt by the way he didn't say yeah the sugar of the earth not sugar but salt sugar is sweet but sugar attracts ants but salt the sweetness of salt is a different kind of savor it's a different kind of flavor and it doesn't attract ants like sugar you see salt has some things that it does that's why it says ye are the salt of the earth number one salt is different from all the other ingredients and it has been like that before and it is still like that today and it will never be like that forevermore salt is different and he's telling us the distinction the difference difference in lifestyle difference in appearance when you come to know christ and then this grace of god works mightily in your life you become different number two salt is sweet and sweetening salt has savor flavor sweetness and when you interact with a christian it's not like pepper and it's not like onion that irritates your eyes irritates and gives you discomfort but no salt sweetens your life if somebody becomes a christian and you associate with that individual you interact with that individual you do business with that individual or you relate with that individual or you are living in the same house with that individual there's a sweetness there's a happiness there is a joy in the interaction with a true believer but if interaction with you looks like you look very inconvenient and looks like you irritate our eyes like onion irritates our eyes then you need a change but you see jesus said ye are the salt of the earth number three salt has healing virtue you see if you have some sauce in your mouth blisters in your mouth and you put some salt in water and you raise your mouth a few times with that salt water it has healing virtue and you see when you interact with a true believer the true believer in his language the comfort in his language the comfort in his relationship with you the way he speaks to you the way he interacts with you the way he behaves to you there's a kind of settlement in your heart a kind of comfort a kind of peace that makes you feel strong you know when you interact with a true believer that is salt they give you self-confidence self-esteem you feel you feel healthy you feel strong you feel happy you feel energetic when you are relating with a true believer but when you are relating with unbelievers do you see unbelievers depress you and they discourage you 
I almost feel I want to go out of this place a lot too much pepper and too much onion in this place but when you come into the midst of true believers then there is salt and a sweetness and that sweetness has a kind of energizing effect in your life number four salt is a preservative preservative it arrests corruption and delays corruption what that means actually in the olden days they didn't have refrigerator and because they didn't have refrigerator if they had fish or meat and they wanted to preserve it from going bad or going rotten what they will do is to sprinkle salt heavily on that meat and that salt will act like a preservative it will slow down the process of corruption it will delay the process of corruption and because of that jesus said ye are the salt of the earth any office where you are working you delay the process of corruption there they want to take bribe and give bribes they say no salt is here so and so is here they say pastor is here although you are not pastor in church but they call you pastor in the place of what because they know the influence the power of your life the influence that a christian has and if you're walking in that place and they want to steal money and then they are bringing all the deal around they say no don't go to so and so don't let him hear because if so and so hears about it the deal is over the game is over because he will not allow such a sin he are the salt of the earth salt acts like a preservative and you now begin to check up your life are you part of the system or are you delaying the corruption in the system then number five salt is influential influential uh, have you sometimes you put your food on the table and then uh, maybe the person who cooked the food forgot to put enough salt and then you test it and you say looks like i'm not going to eat much today why the thing does not have any taste at all and oh i'm sorry i forgot to put the salt and then he brings you must pardon me for this and then he brings the salt and you sprinkle it and stir up and then you begin to eat that little salt has influenced everything in the plate salt is influential and that's why jesus said you are my disciples i put some divine touch in your life and some divine influence in your life a christian is influential you are a teacher in a school and you're a christian and all the other teachers before you came into the um, to the classroom or maybe to the hall and then they begin to decide something and then you come in you say what are you discussing well we want these children to pass i want them to pass too how are we going to make them to pass their exam we're going to do this one that way say no that's evil what are we trying to do here and then you put some ideas and your personality because of the influence you have assault everything changes salt is influential and if you're a christian and you're a follower of the lord jesus christ that's the kind of influence you have you turn things around for the better you will not join people that are doing something planning something that will bring decay corruption evil rottenness in character you say no if we do it like this we're going to become rotten little drops of water make a mighty ocean little bacteria bacteria all together will make everything to be corrupt we cannot do that and then as you put in what you're saying they say that's right then you have you manifest the influence a right influence among the people then number seven salt 
is penetrating penetrating you put it there and the influence just pervades everywhere and jesus said ye are the salt of the earth that your influence is not a localized influence your influence is not just a sectional influence your influence is a pervading influence and then it penetrates everywhere no wonder jesus said ye are the salt of the earth number eight salt works quietly and effectively it's not asking for attention it's not asking for reward it's not making a noise it's not blowing its own trumpet it's not saying here is where i am and the most important ingredient in this food or in this uh, in this meal no salt works quietly yet effectively is that your life or you always want to be recognized for every good thing you do and if there is no recognition if we don't shout your praise then you are discouraged and you don't want to do anything anymore and you want to do a kind of work that doesn't bring encouragement to anybody because we're not shouting your praise but you see salt works quietly yet effectively number nine salt becomes effective in association but useless in isolation you see if you put the salt inside the bottle isolated by itself a lone ranger all alone by itself it's useless and the christian that stays all alone by himself no interaction with anybody isolation leads to worthlessness uselessness but association leads to productivity influence power usefulness and it is when you bring the salt out of the bottle and then you sprinkle it on the soup that's when the influence of the usefulness will come that's the reason why christians believers will live in the community we don't isolate ourselves some people say wouldn't it be a wonderful idea as we are all christians if we could have let us all live here and make tabernacles one for christ one for moses one for elijah and all of us are living in what they call a christian community all of us all christians let's leave the world let, let's leave all our streets let's leave all the communities where we're living and let us come and live all together in a community of holy sanctified righteous people will that not be a good idea that will be a bad idea because then you are collecting all the salt and you are keeping the salt in a bottle all by itself isolation will lead to worthlessness uselessness but association is when you bring the salt out scatter the salt going into all the world you there and you go there and you go there you go to the other place it is that association with the world that will make us really be the salt of the earth let's come back to matthew chapter 5 in matthew chapter 5 i'm reading from verse 13 ye are the salt of the earth and then he starts a warning and tells us the possibility of that salt losing its savor its sweetness its saltiness then it says but if the salt have lost its savor where we shall it be salted it is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden on the foot of men as we look at this passage today the title the topic of our study is the ministry of sanctified salty saints 
the ministry of sanctified salt he says we divide to three points that's the it's right there on your outline number one scriptural identification of symbolic salt this is a symbol this is a type this is an illustration this is a figure of speech this is just a metaphor and yet we need to identify what the salt is scriptural identification of symbolic salt number two in number two we're looking at scriptural spiritual influence of salty saints the spiritual influence of salty saints number three sobering interpretation of savorless salt let's come to number one scriptural identification of symbolic salt come back to matthew chapter 5 verse 13 ye are the salt of the earth we need to identify the people christ referred to as the salt of the earth very simple in matthew chapter 5 it tells us from verse 3 blessed are the poor in spirit theirs is the kingdom of heaven these are people who had seen their spiritual poverty and they have called upon the lord and the lord had drawn them into the kingdom because they responded to the invitation of the king and the sacrifice of christ has had effect in their lives and it says now you are blessed because yours is the kingdom of heaven just as a salt in verse 4 it says blessed are they that mourn for they shall be comforted these are the people that have mourned for their sins they didn't rejoice in their sins they didn't laugh over their sins and they didn't uh, excuse gloss over their sins they didn't justify their sins they saw the smallest sin will be like a grain of sand in your eye and the irritation will be bringing water out of your eyes all the activities of your life will be disturbed by that little grain of sand in your eye and sin is like that the smallest of all sins cannot be excused the smallest of all sins will bring irritation in your heart disturbance to your peace will cancel and destroy rest in your soul will make your conscience to be kind of knocking you every time and because of that you mourn you say lord how sorry i am for that thing that I've done, have mercy upon me, O Lord, according to the multitude of your tender mercies, blot out my transgression. It is that morning that then makes you to come to the Lord and He says, You'll be comforted. What's the comfort? He says, Your sins are forgiven you because you have confessed, because you have forsaken them. Then you have the mercy of the Lord and now you are forgiven. These are the people, the people who have mourned for their sins. The people who have turned away from their sins and the people who have been comforted by the grace of God and now they have the riches of the grace of God in their hearts. These are the people Jesus said, ye are the salt of the earth. Then he says, blessed are they which hunger and thirst after righteousness. For they shall be filled these are the people who by the grace of god are now righteous the grace that bringeth salvation has appeared unto all men teaching us the denying ungodliness and worldly laws we should live righteously soberly godly in this present world those are the people that are the salt of the earth and then he says blessed are the merciful blessed are the merciful these are the people that forgive their enemies these are the people that have a peaceful relationship with other people these are the people that have tasted of the mercy of god and a share of that mercy to all, with other people these are the salt of the earth then he tells us blessed are the pure in heart their hearts are purified they are sanctified they are made holy and they become pure within and pure without these are the people jesus said ye are the salt of the earth 
Blessed are the peacemakers. They are not troublemakers. They are not troublemakers. The troublemakers are like pepper and onion. The troublemakers are contentious. The troublemakers divide people. The troublemakers they scatter people. The troublemakers they make life hot for other people. They make fire to burn in the lives of other people. The troublemakers they burn houses down. They burn families down. But these ones are not troublemakers. These have been touched and transformed by the grace of God. And they are peace loving people, peace making people. Blessed are the peacemakers. For they shall be called the children of God. These, these are the salt of the earth. When he said, Ye are the salt of the earth, he was talking to the people whose lives have been touched and transformed by the grace of God. And then he tells us, Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake. Not because they took somebody's wife. If you took somebody's wife and, and you know the husband or the woman is running after you, you, you are not the salt of the earth. You are a disgrace on earth. You perpetrate corruption, decay, moral decay on earth. It's not talking about the people that defile somebody's daughter. And therefore the man is chasing after you. That one is not salt. When you take these innocent girls and defile them with fornication, that's not salt. You are part of the decay, part of the corruption. But the people that are persecuted for righteousness sake, you are righteous and your life is pure and holy. And because of that purity and holiness and righteousness and uncompromising life, that's the reason they are persecuting you. You are the salt of the earth. The people who are so righteous and their righteousness is noticeable to the people around them. And the righteousness is pricking the conscience of their neighbors. And because if their consciences are not pricked, why will they persecute you? When they steal, you don't steal, it pricks their conscience. When they are drunkards, but you are just a gentle, nice person, and you are not a drunkard, it pricks their conscience. When they steal, and you refuse to steal, and they want, they want to silence their conscience by sharing the money with you, they say, why don't you have part of them? You say, no, I don't touch such money. Don't you need money? I don't need that kind of money. It pricks their conscience. It is the pricking of their conscience that makes them to get after you and to persecute you. And it says, Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake. And these are the people Jesus referred to as salt. Ye are the salt of the earth. They are the people who have been touched and transformed, as I said before, by the grace of God. And then the new change that came to your life has actually meant something that now people are able to notice. There is a change, there is a transformation in the life of this individual. Ye are the salt. Not that in the future you'll be salt. Right now, at the present time, that grace has come to you. At this present time that you claim to be saved, you claim to be born again, at this very time, today, this moment, ye are the salt of the earth. By the way, Jesus used many other symbols and figures of speech and metaphors and illustrations for the children of God. And every time he uses that, it says, ye are, ye are, ye are. Look at John chapter 15 verse 3. In John chapter 15 verse 3, he's still using the same, you know, the same kind of uh, preface to what he said. Ye are. John chapter 15 verse 3. Now ye are clean. Ye are the salt and ye are clean. Ye are the salt of the earth and ye are clean. When you look at salt, if the salt is brown, you say, no, this one is not the proper salt. If the salt is black, 
and say, no, this one cannot be the proper salt. The one I need is shall be white, clean, yeah, clean. If your life is black, if your life is darkened, if your life is dirty, you cannot be the salt, ye are clean through the word that I have spoken unto you. And then in verse 5, I am the vine, ye are the branches. There we are. I am the vine, and you are attached to me. You are associated to me with me. And the virtue in Christ's life has flowed into your life. That means then, because you are a branch in the vine, that's the reason it says, you are the salt of the earth. Jesus came, he went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil. He was touching lives and doing good in their lives. And then you are associated with a good savior, the good shepherd. What do you think will happen? That goodness will rub on you, will flow into your life. And then you become the salt in Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 13. Here the Lord is telling us who the believers are. And all these things are telling us who are the salt of the earth. Ephesians chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 13. But now in Christ Jesus, you sometimes were afar off a mage nigh, that is near by the blood of Christ. Ye are salt, ye are mage near by the blood of Christ. Your nearness to the Lord, your reconciliation with the Lord, your association with the Lord. Your interpenetration with the Lord. He in you and you in him. That's what makes you salt. And then it says in verse 14. And he is our peace. Who has made both one. And has broken down the middle wall of partition between us. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity. Even the law of commandments contained in ordinances. For to make in himself of twain one new man. So making peace, who are the salt of the earth, the new people, making in us one new man. And then he tells us in verse, um, uh, let, let's go back, let's go to verse 19. Now therefore, ye are no more strangers, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but ye are fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. That's the salt ye are. Ye are now fellow citizens in the kingdom of God. And this is what the Lord is telling us. This assurance is giving us that it's when the grace of God has touched your life and the power of the cross of Christ has done an effective work in your life and you're no more the person you used to be. That's when it says now you are salt. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 16. And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. That shall see now the virtue that makes us salt. I, the Almighty God, will dwell in them. That changes our lives. When the Almighty Himself, when the Creator of the heavens and the earth, when He comes to make us a boat in us, it takes every bitter sin and makes it sweet. It takes every negative attitude and makes it positive. It takes every nature that is destructive and turns it around and makes it productive. When the almighty creator, when it comes to living us, I will dwell in them and walk in them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. Wherefore, if you want this to happen to you, if you want to be real salt, not salt on the borderline, that when people taste, 
They say, I don't know where to place this one. I don't know how to categorize this one. I don't know how to label this one. It's not totally sweet as such. And yet, it's not totally pepperish as pepper. Where do we put this one? No. You will not be at the edge, at the periphery of the Christian life and Christian profession. There will be such a clear demonstration that a change has happened in your life. And it says, if you want that very clear change that everybody will be able to tell, even the little children will be able to tell, Mommy, this is salt. Mommy, that brother is sweet. Mommy, that sister is so kind and merciful and nice. Is she a member of our church? And then mommy will say, how do you know? Because you know her attitude, her behavior. And anytime she comes here and then she's relating with us children, I want her to be around in our house every time. Mama, is she a member of our church? There you are. The little children can tell this is salt. And the older people can tell the way you take care of those old men, old women, and then you put joy and happiness in their lives. They can tell this assault. You will not be at the edge. The people cannot tell where are you, where do you stand? Wherefore come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. And I will receive you and will be a father unto you and you shall be my sons and my daughters, says the Lord Almighty. I pray that will happen to every one of us. I did a good amen. amen. I come to point number two, spiritual influence of salty saints. The spiritual influence of salty sins. We come back to Matthew chapter 5 verse 13. Matthew chapter 5. We're reading from verse 13. Ye are the salt of the earth. Think about this. As Jesus Christ began his ministry. He had been moving on now. If you read Matthew chapter 4. I went to all these other places in Galilee. And then it was saying, follow me, I'll make you fishers of men. Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And they were following him. And by this time now, he had quite a number of disciples. And then looking at them. And he saw that their influence will reach beyond Nazareth. And he did not say, ye are the salt of Nazareth. If they were only the salt of Nazareth... How will we feel the impact over here in our country? How will you feel the impact in your country, in your situation where you are there? And then he began to tell them, ye are the salt of the earth. He didn't say, you are the salt of Jerusalem. If all they could do was to influence people in Jerusalem, where would I be, where would you be? But he said, your influence will go beyond Nazareth. Your influence will go beyond Capernaum. Your influence will go beyond Jerusalem. Your influence will go beyond the nation of Israel. He didn't say, ye are the salt of the nation. That would have been wonderful. But he went beyond Nazareth and Capernaum and Jerusalem and Israel. And he said, ye are the salt of the earth. And think about you today. And see the influence and the impact of the Christian faith. In Africa. In Asia. In America. In Europe. In the Pacific. In the Pacifics. Everywhere. Ye are the salt of the earth. You didn't know Matthew. But the book of Matthew is influencing your life. The salt of the earth. Neither have you met Mark. They are writing. You see, when you become a Christian, your writing, your lifestyle, your speech, your action, everything will be a great influence in the world in which you live. You see the people, these believers, the Lord told them, he said, ye are the salt of the earth. <clears throat> I want you to begin to think about your own life. 
Are you just the salt in the village? No more. Are you the salt only in that local assembly? And no more. What kind of influence and power, penetrating influence, positive influence, life transforming influence do you have? What you do, what you say, your life, and the kind of enlarging, extending influence that you have on other people, the things you do, the life you live, is it going across beyond your village, beyond your town, that the Lord Jesus can bring you as part of these people, and he will say, ye are the salt of the earth. But if you are not salt in your locality, how can you be the salt of the earth? If you are not salt in Nazareth, how can your good influence go to Capernaum? You are not even effective and positive, and you are not bringing energy, spiritual energy, to the people in your local Nazareth. How can you go beyond to reach Jerusalem, and then the nation, and then the world? But he told his own disciples, he said, "Ye are the salt of the earth. And then he begins to tell us now what salt will do. Let us go now to Second Kings chapter two, and I'm reading from verse nineteen. In Second Kings chapter two, reading from verse nineteen, and the men of the city said unto Elisha, "Behold, I pray thee, the situation of this city is pleasant, as my Lord seeth." But the water is not, and the ground is barren. And he said, Bring me a new cruise and put salt therein. They needed a miracle, a miracle of transformation. They said, The ground was barren, and the water was kind of poisonous, causing death, disease, and death. And they came to the man of God. They said, see the situation of our city. To start with, Elisha was sought in his community. They could come to him. The people of that city came to him. And the woman also that had nothing. That is, you know, her two sons were to be taken. Came to him. Every time they wanted sweetness, happiness, comfort deliverance healing in their lives they came to elisha that man was salt the salt in his community even naaman coming from a foreign land because of the leprosy that man was salt and now they came to him and he knew what will make the change in the lives of the people and in their land and said he said bring the new crews and put salt therein and he brought it to him and he went forth unto the spring of the waters and cast the salt in there and said thus says the lord i have healed these waters salt has healing virtue medicinal healing virtue and you know in your life you can have healing virtue did you know that somebody had depression and it feels everybody hates me nobody loves me somebody is having suicidal spirit he wants to kill himself because he feels everybody rejects me why am i living on earth and then you are the salt of the earth you identify that person you get near just a smile just a touch just a word and it's so comforting and then something begins to say in our heart i thought everybody hates me i thought nobody wants me around and then you come around again and then you discuss with him and then you dispel all her fears and if he, he begins to feel happy and then the light begins to shine and it begins to feel i am worth something that's why this fellow is coming to me and his self-confidence comes back and his self-esteem comes back and his joy comes back and eventually he gets out of that depression you've done something you are the salt of the earth healing virtue 
somebody is going through pain somebody is going through heartache somebody is going through difficult times and then you are the salt of the earth with healing virtue and then you go there it's, it's got a lot of bitterness bottled up in him because of experiences negative experiences in life and then you come near and then your interaction is sweet happy joyful and it brings some joy some faith hope confidence and trust into his life and then he begins to feel happy happiness brings health a merry heart doeth good like medicine and so as you become salt like that you have the healing virtue that's what the lord is telling us ye are the salt of the earth in the verse 21 and he went forth unto the spring of the waters and cast the salt in there and said thus says the lord i have healed these waters there shall not be from thence any more death or barren land so the waters were healed unto this day not a temporary healing effect a permanent sustained healing effect so the waters were healed unto this day according to the saying of elisha which he spake and that's what the lord is telling us in colossians chapter 4 verse 5 and verse 6 colossians chapter 4 and i'm reading from verse 5 colossians chapter 4 verse 5 and verse 6 walk in wisdom toward them that are without they have enough pressure already don't increase their pressure walk in wisdom towards them that are without they have enough bitterness and hatred already don't increase their bitterness and hatred walk in wisdom towards them that are without know what to tell them know what to share with them know what to discuss with them know how to interact with them walk in wisdom be salt in their lives don't be pepper in their lives don't be onions in their lives yeah the salt of the earth walk in wisdom towards them that are without redeeming the time let your speech be always with grace seasoned with salt let your talk your conversation your discussion be always with grace seasoned with salt let your attitude to them you know your attitude is very important when you meet somebody your attitude can make them feel unhappy your attitude can make them feel dejected your attitude can make them remember only their problems but if you have a bright attitude a gracious attitude a happy attitude a helpful attitude a hopeful attitude if you have a good attitude a great attitude gracious attitude let your attitude be always with grace seasoned with salt as you touch the lives of other people during the day that you just smile and you scatter all their kind of darkness the sunshine all around you because of what you carry you carry the grace of god and the gospel of grace the good news of the lord let your speech be always with grace seasoned with salt that she may know how you ought to answer every man that your conversation will never end in contention will never end in quarreling will never end in argument you know how to answer people maybe they are going through some bad times and then when they meet you they want to you know they act that way then you realize immediately this fellow has problem 
This fellow has bitterness inside him. This fellow, the way he's talking is like there is a burden inside his life. A lot of pepper and fire and onion in his life. Before he goes, I'm going to give him some salt. I'm going to share with him the brightness of the grace of God. I'm not going to allow his pepperish attitude to change my own gracious attitude. I'm going to be different because I am salt, not pepper, not onion. And so, as we interact with people all around, you want to share with them something that will bring more grace into their lives. That you'll be able to say, by the grace of God, I put some sweetness and joy and happiness and love into his life. And then, before he leaves you, when he came, he was frowning. Now, before he leaves you, he can go with a smile. Let your speak your action your attitude your behavior your character be always with grace seasoned with salt that she may know how ye ought to answer every man in first thessalonians chapter one first thessalonians chapter one i'm reading to you from verse seven in verse 7 it says so that ye were examples to all that believe in macedonia and achaia for from you sounded out the word of the lord not only in macedonia and achaia but also in every place your faith your god word is spread abroad so that we need not speak anything here is paul the apostle commending and praising appreciating the Thessalonian believers because they were spreading joy and life and love and mercy and the goodness of God everywhere they were because their faith was a positive kind of faith and their lives have changed and that change of life then influenced them to know how to relate with other people and what joy they were spreading and what life they were spreading and what what good news they were bringing to other people everywhere paul the apostle went in that community he was hearing about them that these thessalonian believers they have shared some things with us by their lifestyle in verse in verse 9 it says for they themselves show of us what manner of entering in we had unto you and now ye turn to God from idols to serve the living and true God. And they are showing us everywhere we go that your conversion is real. Your conversion is genuine. Your conversion is verifiable. We can verify it. Because they show us what kind of entering in we add unto you. And then it says, they tell us that you have turned from idols dead idols and you have turned unto the living god and to wait for his son from heaven whom he raised from the dead even jesus which delivered us from the wrath to come we're told in mark chapter 9 mark chapter 9 reading from verse 50 the Lord is expecting that every one of us will have this kind of virtue, this kind of grace, this kind of life, this kind of influence, this kind of inspiration in the lives of other people around us. Mark chapter 9 verse 50, salt is good. But if the salt have lost its saltness, wherewith shall, it, shall you season it? Have salt in yourselves have salts in yourselves have this grace of salt in yourselves have this grace that sweetens the lives of other people in yourselves make sure that it's not just salt generally in the church have it in you the grace the faith, the love, the righteousness. Don't wait for others to have it before you have it. Be a person that is at the forefront, 
that when we see the salt in your life it will be an encouragement to all the people that they will say I know so and so he used to get irritated at every little thing but now it looks like he's got some salt I want what he has got I know so and so she used to get angry at every little thing and every little thing will bring his temper out but looks like it's got some sort of love or gentleness it's got some sort of good attitude his life is beautiful he makes me happy now she makes me happy now i want to have what she's got don't wait for other people have salt in yourselves and have peace one with another we'll have it in jesus name now we come back to matthew chapter 5 matthew chapter 5 verse 13 in matthew chapter 5 verse 13 here we we'll read again ye are the salt of the earth but if the salt have lost its savor what sobering information is this the possibility of the salt losing its savor losing its sweetness losing its saltiness have you found anybody like that before you met him just last week so nice so sweet so encouraging so comforting sharing brightness and joy everywhere then you meet him today and it's like you cannot recognize him anymore his attitude is kind of disturbing his conversation is disturbing and you say but i saw him last week all the sweetness is gone all the mercy is gone the way he's talking now is at enmity with the whole of the world i don't want to help anybody i don't want to be merciful to anybody i don't want to care what is happening to anybody i want to take care about my life now i just want to think about myself the selfishness you see today then you say where is the sweetness of yesterday where is the saltiness of yesterday where is the savor that i saw the other time but if the salt have lost a savor wherewith shall it be salted then the lord tells us the terrible consequence that comes as a result of losing the savor and it says it is thenceforth good for nothing when you are salt you're good for something when you're sweet you're good for something the children desire you is good for something the women want you to speak to them he always have an encouraging word he lift up your faith you're good for something when somebody is going through tro trouble times he wants to meet you he wants to share with you he, he wants to open up a certain expose what he's going through because he knows what you are going to do you are going to add some sweetness to his life if i can just see brother so and so now this thing i'm going through if i can just see sister so and so now this thing i'm going through i know that she's going to be very helpful to me you're good for something but if we meet you now today and the saltiness is gone and the smile is gone and the encouragement is gone and the lifting up is gone all that remains now is just this bitter attitude bitter to everyone around and we say what's the matter what has happened to so and so what has happened to such and such why is it that so and so has lost the saltiness and now it's not good for anything good for nothing and then it says only to be cast out and to be trodden under the foot 
of men in Luke chapter 14 here is the same thing the Lord is still emphasizing to us the possibility of losing that sweetness the possibility of losing that grace the possibility of losing that saltness savor out of your life in Luke chapter 14 verse 34 and verse 35 salt is good always salt is good salt is good grace is good light is good sweetness is good good influence positive influence is good salt is good but if the salt have lost a savor wherewith shall it be seasoned you know in the family when a smile laughter joy good interaction discussion life brightness that's good and the wife will never think of separation or divorce salt is good and the husband will never think of going to stay i want to go and stay with my friends for one week and the wife is asking why i want to have some relief i want to go and rest for one week can't you rest here for one week no i cannot rest here nobody can rest in fire but when the salt has lost a savor when the wife has lost her sweetness the husband wants to run away from home and go and stay one week one month with his friends where you can find some sweetness and where there's sweetness the children when they finish school they'll come back home they there's salt at home the sweetness at home i want to go to daddy and mommy at home the sweetness in that home but when the children begin to stay away late why did you come late today they watch the mouth of the child when she wants to tell you a lie and then the mouth will be trembling a little and then she'll be rubbing the mouth she'll, she's scratching the head looking for something to stay they delayed us in school that we should finish our assignment before we come you are not telling me the truth why didn't you come in time then inside him the child is saying daddy i cannot tell you but you know there's no sweetness in this house but i get sweetness with my friends when we play together he cannot tell you let there be sweetness in the family and the children will want to come home when they finish their classes and when if they have gone outside maybe to college or university they'll be dreaming of, they'll be counting days three days more i'll be at home the sweetness in that home two days more we are vacating i'll be going home the sweetness in that house today now we are closing i know daddy will be coming to pick me she's so happy he's so happy because daddy is coming to pick him the sweetness in that home preserve some salt in your family but you know when the children are not willing to come home anymore there's something going wrong that's why jesus said in this luke chapter 14 reading from verse 35 it is neither feet for the land nor yet for the don't heal but men cast them out don't let your people don't let people cast you out from their mind you know they are there but you are there but they don't want to know whether you are there or not after all you're not bringing sweetness salt joy happiness into their lives men cast them out we're told in matthew chapter 8 this casting out there is a temporary casting out there's a permanent casting out there's an earthly casting out here on earth and there is an eternal casting out beyond the earth matthew chapter 8 and we're reading from verse 11 matthew chapter 8 
reading from verse 11 and I say unto you that many shall come from the east and west and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven but the children of the kingdom shall be cast out that's a serious sin the children of the kingdom shall be cast out now we're going to the side of the spiritual life somebody is born again somebody is saved and the grace of God which is like salt comes into his life and then eventually as he's living the Christian life he lived that Christian life for some time and you can see the salt there and you can see the transforming power of the grace of God in his life but he now begins to yield to temptation and he now begins to yield to sin and the grace of God is no more there if he dies in that condition not having salt not having sweetness not having savor not having grace in his heart he was saved before but now he's lost everything the grace is gone and you can tell is the troubleshooter and the troublemaker in the community is the one who said come and take your member is fighting come and look at your member is tearing the clothes of another fellow almost wanting her to be naked in the public what is this and then you go there and you say ah uh -uh. you not don't you go to church don't you profess to be born again leave me alone i will show him something i will show him pepe he doesn't have salt to show him he will show him pepe he's lost the grace he has lost the experience he had with the lord he has lost the sweetness he has lost the good word all he can show you now he will show you pepe and that's true that's all he has because if he does not have grace how can he show you grace if he does not have mercy and love and comfort how can you how can he show you what he does not have all he can show you now is the loss of grace out of his life if he dies in that condition that's what the lord is saying look at that again matthew chapter 8 verse 11 verse 12 now but the children of the kingdom shall be cast out that's like salt that has lost its savor cast out shall be cast out then it says into outer darkness and there shall be weeping and gnashing of Tears. Let's look at Matthew chapter 13, reading from verse 47. Matthew chapter 13, verse 47. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a net that was cast into the sea and gathered of every kind which when it was full they drew to shore and sat down and gathered the goods into the vessel and cast the badge away they cast the badge away the ones that are not good salt is good but this one these ones are not good therefore they cast them away then it says in verse 49 so shall it be at the end of the world the angels shall come forth and sever and separate the wicked from among the just and shall cast them into the furnace of fire there shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth that's it again in matthew chapter 22 verse 13 this is serious matter that those who lose the saltness the grace and did not go back to christ to calvary to the cross to have it back again and they're going from bad to worse from bitter 
to greater levels of bitterness from wickedness to greater level greater heights of wickedness if they die in that condition they'll be cast out of the kingdom they'll miss heaven in Matthew chapter 22 verse 13 then said the king to the servant bind him hand and foot and take him away and cast him into outer darkness there shall be weeping and gnashing of tears in Matthew chapter 25 Matthew chapter 25 reading from verse 30 and cast she the unprofitable servant when the salt had lost his savor it's good for nothing it's now unprofitable unprofitable to men women or children unprofitable in any country in any community cast she the unprofitable servant into utter darkness there shall be weeping and gnashing of tears john chapter 15 in john chapter 15 reading from verse 6 if a man abide not in me he is cast forth as a branch and is withered and men gathered them and cast them into the fire and they are burnt by the way all these words from matthew chapter 8 matthew chapter 13 matthew chapter 22 matthew chapter 25 and john chapter 15 are the words of jesus christ and jesus said the possibility is there for you to lose the sweetness of the grace of god out of your life and if you lose it and don't have it back again jesus said such an individual will be cast out into outer darkness but today is still the day of opportunity we can have the grace of god today i said we can have the grace of god today and while the opportunity is still there seek the lord while he may be found call ye upon him while he's near let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man is thoughts and let him return unto the lord and then the lord says he will have mercy on him he will abundantly pardon if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and seek my face and pray and turn from their wicked ways i will hear from heaven i will forgive their sin i will heal their land come let us reason together says the lord though your sins be as scarlet it says i'll wash you as white as snow and though they be red like crimson then it says i'll make you as white as wool if ye be willing and obedient ye shall eat the good of the land but if ye refuse and rebel ye shall be devoured by the sword for the mouth of the lord has said it the lord is saying turn turn from your wicked ways why will you die O children of israel i have no pleasure in the death of the wicked but that the wicked should turn unto him and he says when you turn he says then i will forgive you make you a new heart and then so that iniquity will not be your ruin judgment is coming and the salt that has lost his savor and does not have it back will be cast out into outer darkness there shall be weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth but today is still the day of opportunity and you can still come and then the lord says whosoever comes to me i will in no wise cast off when the lord is calling and is saying come then you ought to come the spirit and the bride say come and let him that heareth say come and he that is a thirst let him come and take the water of life 
freely grace is available today and then when you come and the mercy of god comes upon your life there's a transforming power a changing power that then you come into christ and then you're able to rejoice and say i was blind now i can see i was bitter now i am sweet that's why the lord is expecting that those if you check up your life and you see that the grace of salt is no more there you will say like the prodigal son i will arise and go unto my father and i will say father i have sinned against you and against heaven i'm no more worthy to be called thy son make me one of your servants and then the bible says and he arose and he came unto his father and when the father saw him afar off then he embraced him they came together and when he was still saying father i have seen then the father forgave him and said take away the dirty clothes out of him give him a change of frame and for this my son was lost and is found again and this my son was dead and is alive again and they began to make merry heaven will rejoice because of you angels will rejoice because of you there is joy in heaven before the angels of god in the presence of the angels of god for one sinner that repents and returns unto the fold and then you come to the foot of the cross tonight you say lord i know the way i was how gentle i was how nice and kind i was how merciful i was how courageous with conviction i was i know the way i was how the grace of god the sweetness of the lord was in my heart i know the way i was i was sensitive to the voice of the lord and to the touch of the grace of god but today things are different lord i don't want to remain like this put your salt your grace your mercy your transforming power back into my life and the lord will do it I said the Lord will do it and then the Lord will be able to tell you once again ye are the salt of the earth and you need to pray until heaven will be able to declare the bitterness is gone and all those nasty things and dirty things all of them are gone and now heaven can smile at you and say now a change has taken place a creation a new creation has taken place ye are now the salt of the earth I'm going to be be the salt of the earth i said i am going to be the salt of the earth i am going to be the salt of the earth why don't you rise up and then tell the lord and say lord here i come today i want this salt in my heart i want this grace in my heart i want this change in my heart i want this transformation in my heart. i want the touch of calvary the transformation of the cross of christ to do something within me today all the irritation all the anger all the bitterness all the wickedness all the violence all the backsliding all the negative attitude take everything away from me lord i want to be salt i want to pray and have a change in my heart in my life until you can say you can proclaim once again ye are the salt of the earth the lord is calling you today and the lord wants to put this salt in your life in your character in your behavior in your attitude he wants to make the change he wants to make the change allow him let go and let god let go of all those negative attitudes do you want to be cast out into outer darkness do you want to be rejected by the lord on that final day look at your life look at your temper look at your relationship your interaction with those around you your life does it show the evidence of being born again evidence of a new life evidence of a gracious life evidence of a gentle life evidence of a beautiful kind comforting merciful life does your life show the grace the sweetness the salt the savor the virtue of christ are you different different from pepe 
different from onion are you different if any man be in Christ he is a new creature old things are passed away behold all things are become new quiet but effective quiet you are not blowing your own trumpet you are not looking for recognition you are not asking for anybody to shout your praise or to sing your praise you are quiet yet you are effective you are the salt of the earth but if the salt has lost a savor wherewith shall it be salted it is this false good for nothing are you good for something are you a blessing to other people's lives or you're good for nothing be good for something in the lives of people around you let your wife express that goodness i'm happy he is my husband let your children be happy because of that goodness i'm happy he is my daddy i'm happy she is my mommy let your husband be happy for the goodness of salt salt is good goodness of salt in your life i'm happy that is the woman i married let the church be happy for your being a member of the church not that they are regretting why is so and so there let your landlord be happy i'm happy so and so is one of my tenants can you go and look for another tenant like you bring them in then you are salt if the salt had lost its savor where we each shall it be salted it is this false good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under the foot of men have salt within yourselves have peace one with another